If you're looking for a densitometer and can't find one at a good price, try one of these. So a while back, I talked about densitometers and gave an idea of how much they are and where you can find them. So some of you may feel that those are out of your budget. That's okay. They also might be hard to find. That's okay. If you're still interested in doing some sensitometry, either just to make some H and D curves or maybe zone system, then you may get by with a spot meter. Now there are a lot of different makes and models out there. The Pentax analog and digital meters are really good. I used to have the digital one. I liked it quite a bit. Minolta made one called the Minolta F spot meter. Those are very good. And Siconic has them and they're multimeters. This is the L758DR and it's got a one degree spot meter built in. So this is step number one. Step number two, is a light source because you can't just point your spot meter at a piece of film and get a densitometer reading. You're going to need to backlight your film and I suggest something that's very even and easy to control. So a light box obviously is a good choice but if you don't have one or can't get one then you can make do with other things such as an LED video light like what I use to make my videos or maybe your iPhone and just set it to a white screen. I would suggest diffusing both of those with maybe some white acetate or white acrylic, just so you have a nice even surface. A small tripod would be nice to hold the light meter so that it doesn't move, because you really want to keep the meter pointing at the same spot on your light source so that if it's uneven, like my light box, which is not a very good one, has hot spots. So by making sure this is static over that, I can be sure that any variation in reading is from the film, not the light box itself. Now you're going to need a third part and that's because these meters do not focus very close. This meter at best will focus at about 30 inches or so. You're going to need to focus a lot closer than that. So you're going to need a supplemental lens. So I have a plus 10 series 7 diopter lens. This is a close-up lens. Last time you heard me talk about series size filters. You don't have to get that. You can get any size filter that you want. This meter takes a 30.5 millimeter diameter filter. So I have a 30.5 millimeter to series 7 adapter. I can just put that on there. Look at that. And then Put that in there and then close that up. You don't have to go that fancy, quite frankly. You can get just a diopter lens and just put it on there with a piece of uh, cardboard. Make a tube out of cardboard and you're fine. Now what strength lens do you need? I would recommend a plus 8 to 10 diopter lens. That will get you within uh, maybe about a four inch distance from your film and that will read with a one degree spot meter only a couple of millimeters in diameter. If you're looking for a lens you can of course get a close-up lens. You can get really high powered ones off eBay really cheap from China and they don't have to be good. They just have to be good enough to do this. Or you can get supplemental lenses from places like Surplus Shed, Edmund Optics, Thor Labs, places like that. Now they tend to not have their lenses in diopters. They have them in focal length. That's easy to figure out. Focal length is one meter divided by diopters. So a plus eight would be 125 millimeters. A plus 10 would be 100 millimeters. So any of those will work just fine. You just want to get in pretty close. So light meter, light source, plus 10 supplemental lens, and you're ready to go. So let's move over to my table and see how it works. Here we have our final setup. I've got my light meter suspended over my light box. It's only a few inches. And I've got my patch here taped off. So this is where I'll actually be 
placing the film. If I were using this in a final sort of uh, reading area, I would cover the entire light box with black paper and have just this cut out. But if I did that today, uh, my video light source would be gone and you wouldn't see anything. So I'm going to go ahead and allow this to be free. The reason I would block it off is flare. Uh, this introduces just a lot of flare and might give me an erroneous reading. So if I wanted to minimize flare, I'd tape everything off. But today it's gonna play free. All right. So I've got my meter set to EV reading. That's going to keep an easy cleanup instead of apertures and f-stops. We're only worried about the EV reading. So with this in here, I'm gonna go ahead and place my film. I've got the clear area showing, and let's take a reading here. All right, we're reading 13. So let's move the first patch down. And we have 12.6. This meter reads in 12.5. This meter reads in half stop increments, and the step wedge is half stop increments. So that runs in nicely. So let's move down to the next 12.1, so another half stop. One point six, another half stop. 11.1, so this is proving itself to be very effective. 10.6, so every step being a half stop is showing me half a stop difference. That's exactly what we want to see. And because my actual reading area is roughly just one or two diameter, uh, or one, one or two millimeter diameters, I can get a very fine point on my negative. 35 millimeter might be harder to read, medium format and large format, certainly uh, very doable. So that is the basic setup. You can have just a tripod head or arm on here. I'm using just a grip arm and then a light box. This could easily be just a video light with some diffusion, your phone, if that's what you have with the white screen and diffusion. So let's go back and summarize our thoughts here. And it's as easy as that. So, three things, light meter, supplemental lens, light source, and you have a makeshift densitometer. And it's fairly accurate. This type of meter reads in tenth of a stops, so it's easy to tell when I have half a stop. The Pentax meters read in third of a stop, so you can still do pretty well. The Minolta spot meter, I don't know what increments that reads in. So if you have that, or even a Soligar, you're on your own. I don't know those measurements, but you should be able to find that pretty easy, especially if you have one, you should know exactly what kind of increments those read in. And then you just read them. So on a densitometer, 0.1 on a densitometer for film is a third of a stop. So 0.3 density is a stop. This is reading in half stops, so you can do pretty good. And that's close enough to get good curves and zone system measurements, and you're all set. So if you can't get that densitometer and you just need something to make those things, this works great. So hope that helps you. Get out there, make some photographs, read some film, and I will see you next time.